in the previous lecture we studied about the influence line diagrams what are the influence line diagrams and what are the different uses of influence line diagrams and how to draw the ILDs for the support reactions now in this lecture we will be going to study that how to draw the ILDs for the horizontal thrust for a three hinged arch so in this diagram this is your three hinged arch a b and c c is your crown point the total span of this arch is capital l now at each support there will be two reactions one horizontal thrust and one vertical reaction so this is your capital h and b a and this is your capital h and v b suppose this is your unit rolling load which is moving from a support towards the b support suppose at any instant of time this rolling load reaches at a distance of small x from the a support see we have taken the distance x from the a support therefore the value of x will be 0 at a support the distance of c point from the a support is l by 2 therefore the value of x will be l by 2 at c point the distance of the b point or the b support from the a support is capital L so the value of small x will be equal to capital L at support B now in order to draw the ILD for the horizontal thrust, first of all, we will find out the value of the vertical reactions at A and B. Okay. And in order to find out the values of V and VB, we will apply all the equilibrium equations. So first, summation of all the vertical forces is equal to zero. So total upward force is equal to total downward force. So VA plus VB equal to one. Now summation of moment about any point equal to zero. So we have taken summation of moment about a point equal to zero. Now the line of action of H and VA are coinciding with the A support. Therefore their moment will be zero. Third force is one. Now this one is acting in the downward direction. So this will produce a clockwise bending moment about a point. And for clockwise we are going to take as positive and for anti-clockwise we are going to take as negative see whenever we take the moment about any point equal to zero we can take clockwise as positive or we can take clockwise as negative the answer will come out to be the same it will not make any difference so one into x will be your moment due to one now the fourth force is vb now this force is acting in the upward direction so this force will produce an anti-clockwise bending moment about a point and for anti-clockwise we are going to take as negative so minus force is vb and perpendicular distance is capital L so minus vb into L and this equal to 0 so the value of vb will come out to be x by L now put the value of vb in equation number 1 we will get the value of va which, uh, which will come out to be 1 minus x by L see now there will be two cases when the rolling load is in part AC and when the rolling load is in part BC. See, for these two cases, the value of V and VB will remain the same because if this rolling load comes here also, the distance will remain the same, that is X, because we are considering the distance of the rolling load with respect to A support. So, even if this rolling load comes on the CB portion, this will be X and these equations will will remain the same therefore the the values of v and vb will come out to be the same so now we will consider the two cases and we will find out the the values of the horizontal thrust for each case now let us first consider the first case in which the rolling load is in the parts ac so this is a diagram for the first case so for this first case let us find out the equation of the horizontal thrust and we know that in order to find out the horizontal thrust we apply summation of bending moment about the crown point where there is an internal hinge equal to zero so see whenever we apply the summation of a moment about crown point equal to zero we can either take the right part of the crown point or we can take the left uh, part of the crown point if you see the left part of the crown point there are three loads one h and va and if you see the right part there are two loads so we will take the right part so we have taken the right part again we are applying summation mc equal to zero so if we take uh, uh, clockwise as positive or clockwise as a negative it will not make any difference so we are going to take clockwise as positive and anti-clockwise as negative so there are two forces now so first force is your h 
so first force is your capital H now this capital H is acting in the leftward direction so this will produce a clockwise bending moment about C point so for clockwise it will be positive and the perpendicular distance of the line of action of H and C point is a small h so capital H into small h second force is VB which is acting in the upward direction so this will produce an anti-clockwise moment about C point and for anti-clockwise we will take as negative force is x by L and the perpendicular distance of VB from C point is L by 2 so x by L into L by 2 this equal to 0 so the equation of capital H and that is your horizontal thrust will come out to be x by 2H now and this equation is for the AC portion and at AC x equal to 0 and at C x equal to L by 2 so therefore put x equal to 0 the value of H will come out to be 0 at x equal to L by 2 the value of H will come out to be L by 4H so these are the values of the horizontal thrust when the unit load is in the part AC now let us consider the second portion when the unit load is in the C portion CB portion so this is the diagram for this case see again find out the equation of capital H for this case now so so we will have to take the moment about the crown point equal to 0 and uh, see when we apply the moment about C point equal to 0 we can either take the left portion or we can take the right portion if you see the right portion there are three forces one VB and one horizontal force also sorry and this is your VB this sorry there has been some mistake here and this will be VB and this will be capital H okay the value of VB is X by L this X by L is not there okay see so if you see the right portion of the C point there are three forces one H and VB and if you see the left portion of the C point there are two forces capital H and BA so it will be much easier to take the left portion so we have taken the left portion so if you see the left portion first force is capital H so this force is acting in the right forward direction so this force will take the C point in the anti-clockwise direction and for anti-clockwise we are going to take as see uh, here I have taken anti-clockwise as positive and clockwise as negative okay so plus and the perpendicular distance of the line of action of capital H from C point is a small h so this one see you can also take it as negative and this is positive the answer will come out to be the same okay so here this VA is acting in the upward direction so this will take this C point in the clockwise direction and for clockwise I have taken here as negative so minus force is this and the perpendicular distance of VA from C point is L by 2 so force VB into L by 2 this equal to 0 after solving this equation we will get the equation of capital H is L minus X this divided by 2H again if you see here the power of X is 1 therefore the variation of the horizontal thrust will be a linear variation and that is a straight lines now this equation is for the case when the load is in the CB portion so at C the value of X is L by 2 at B the value of X is capital L so first we will put x equal to L by 2 then we will put x equal to capital L so putting all these values the value will come out to be L by 4H and 0 now just uh, plot the values see for the AC portion at x equal to 0 and uh, the value was 0 at x equal to L by 2 the value was L by 4H and for the CB portion at x equal to L by 2 the value was L by 4H and at B the value is 0 so 0 L by 4H and 0 join these lines by a straight line so this is your ILD for the horizontal thrust